guys, in this video, the CJ gets 410 gears and a hydraulic clutch, and then we take it off-road. Alright guys, so working on the Jeep now, finally. Uh, we kind of dropped everything to work on this velocity project, but now that this thing's kind of wrapped up, we can start working on this. Um, so I don't know how much I recorded of this, but here's the 410 axle wide track with solid axle shafts, non two piece. So that was in there and it did all right, but it leaks a lot from both seals. You can see like those marks where the oil came down on the tires there. You can see on this one too. And all that did was just freaking throw oil everywhere. Like you can see that mark on the bumper and stuff. So the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna jack it up and I have all the parts to replace the bearings and the axle seals because I mean, if you're replacing the seals, might as well replace the bearings while you're at it. And then also the clutch, it, I don't know if you remember this, but we kind of hacked together a uh, like the manual clutch linkage and it's it's like binding super bad so I got um I got an OEM hydraulic clutch like master cylinder and slave cylinder so what we'll do is we'll rig that to fit with these pedals and with the engine so that'll be really cool and all these mods should really help with the drivability of the entire Jeep. so the first thing I got to do is I got to take apart the drum brake I already did on this side and I've done this about like 50 times so this should be really quick, so let's start it. Alright, so now this is all completely disassembled and the next thing we gotta do is we gotta unbolt these retainer bolts behind here and that's the only thing that holds the axle shaft in. So you just unbolt them and the whole thing will slide out. And we just took all these bolts out and then all you have to do is just slide it out. Oh dude, this bearing is destroyed. It's self destruct look at this. You see that? Yeah. Oh my gosh, look. Yep. Wow. Well, that's an issue. But yeah, this whole thing just pulls right out. Let's go look at the bearing. It's oh, you can't even see Yeah, here. Take a look. Yeah, it's just destroyed. All right. We took everything off of this axle. So now we're gonna do it for this. The strategy for this is first you just like destroy the outside of this bearing and then you just come in with the angle grinder and cut like here and then across here. That way you can split it apart and it's just, it'll slide off the shaft. Cause all this stuff is pressed on. So really the best way to get it off is to cut it. I had the shaft a little bit there, but. Let's see if it'll come apart. There we go. So now what I gotta do is I just gotta keep bringing this down. All right guys, I got my uh, Harbor Freight <laughs> flamethrower and I'm gonna use it to, as you can see, if I have messed up all this, uh, this edges here and this inside of the bearing, I'm gonna be using this because this isn't gonna come out with, without some heat. Um, I'm messing with, for, messing with it for a while and I'm just gonna make it red hot and hammer on it until it comes out, so this should be interesting. All right guys, so we made this like slide hammer kind of thing and uh, after heating it like 50 times, ah, <laughs> we got it out. And then 
Now I just gotta clean out all the carnage from in there. So now that that's out, and I got this all cleaned up. There's actually a lot of like metal shavings in there that I was able to get out. Um, now I just need to install stuff like the seals and this uh, retainer thing. So now we're just pressing the bearing on, as you can see. Then all you have to do now, you just press it on until it stops, and then you press the retainer on, and it should be ready to go. Don't forget your big, big backing plate and, or your seal. So all the bearing and retainers are on. All that's ready to go. So now all I have to do is put RTV on that, and this, and then the other side of the seal, and reinstall. It's all bolted down. I got RTV everywhere, and it that knocking is the um, brake drum on the other side. But it spins really, it spins you know pretty well. And then zero play. That was my main concern. If it had play and if it leaked, because this side before had a ton of play. So now I'm just gonna assemble the brakes. Well, we measured where to mount our clutch master cylinder. Originally, they go all the way up here, but our, our power booster gets in the way. And uh, this whole area is really busy. So right here is kind of the only place we can get it. So that's kind of going to take away from our clutch travel a little bit, but it'll be all right. I hate using hole saws, but. Oh my gosh. All right, you stalled it. Perfect. Yeah. Let's go out first. Ow, my ears. Yeah, that was loud. <laughs> Give it a sec. Yep. All right. Time out for the drill. <laughs> oh, <laughs> the yeah, Ryobi right. comes in and pulls through. Now this All thing, right. yeah, 20 bucks been lasting me my Let's whole life. Let's see how much progress we've made. Now we're really close. Yeah. All right. Well, say goodbye. <laughs> Final resting place. Nah. All right. Hole right there, the uh, Ryobi, um, the Ryobi drill bit was able to do it. Aside, so now all we have to do is drill the two other holes, and then what we'll have to do is we'll have to weld a bolt to this clutch pedal here, and then it's really hard to explain this, but the clutch pedal is going to sit at about the same height as the brake pedal, and it's not going to have as much travel. It's probably going to have about three to four inches of travel, but it'll be all right. It's just kind of welding a bolt right onto here. Uh, so we have a lock nut that will be able to thread onto that and then as you can see that hole behind it So the master cylinder will go right there and you can see it stays right in a, it pretty much a, a straight line So it'll work just fine 
there it's uh, like right in the center and then it goes down a little bit and then it stays there but it'll stay at the same radius pretty much the whole time and be all right so now what we're gonna do is we're gonna wait for this to dry and paint it and then while we're doing that Blake's gonna be working on getting the um, slave cylinder all mounted up so hopefully I'll have a working clutch cylinder there and then you can see the slave cylinder right there yeah so we have that one horizontal bar right there. This guy, it's held on with just a quarter 20 right now. Its purpose is mostly for alignment, but it'll also give us like a little bit of extra strength. And then we'll weld this piece of metal to this stock mount. And then it'll kind of give it like another support because we yeah, want it to be nice and stiff. So. Yeah, once it's all welded up, we'll give you a shot from under there. But it's really tight, so we'll just wait. I'll weld it up. So it's gonna mount to the bell housing here through the transmission to engine bolt and then through the dust shield quarter 20 bolt here. So that way it has strength this way and then strength this way. All right guys, so now we're just coating some paint on it because I mean, it doesn't have to look too pretty. It just has to be painted. I think that'll do it. All painted up and mounted up on the heater. So now we just have to mount it in the car. Uh, we just bled all the brakes and stuff and it's good to go guys, I'm really excited. I'm really excited to see how this, um, is putting in our uh, factory. This is an OEM one, and OEM, this master cylinder is mounted here, and it's down a little bit, so we'll just have to do a little bit of bending. I mean, not that big of a deal. So yeah, after this, we'll just top it off with some brake fluid, and we'll be good to go. Now, I don't know if you guys can see that, but our slave cylinder Bent. Oh, that okay, so started. our bracket, first of all, our bracket bent, and then to make things worse, our brand new oil filter has a hole in it now, because <laughs> the thing bent over, and, yep, that's just... I just spent the last hour or so working on, it basically getting back to the point where we were before, where it broke. So, our weak point here is basically all of this here that isn't supported when it's forcing itself this way so it bent so what we need to do is i'm going to add a little triangular gusset right here and i'm basically going to weld these two as studs and then to take it off you'll just undo these nuts and then so i'll have this triangular place i'm just going to fill this cavity with a weld okay i mean i just want to super overbuild this and then what i'm going to do is i'm going to have another one of these that'll go here and it'll bolt onto the back of this quarter 20 bolt with a nut. So I just really want to make this overbuilt because I mean, guys, if this bends back and hits like the oil filter when I'm driving, that's gonna be catastrophic. So, all right, guys, sorry, I got some heavy welds on these bolts. And I got this piece to some triangle piece in there. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna weld this up and then what I'll do is I'm gonna box in the sides here with two other pieces but first I'm gonna weld this up a ton then what I can do is I can box in these sides here and then I can have another one of these running straight across here all right so I have this one side boxed in so I just cleaned up this edge so this will be able to mount flush to it so I'm just gonna weld this up and then I'll work on this other long piece here that's gonna go on the other side of this and bolt to this bolt. So yeah, this thing better not flex or I'm gonna be pissed. Alright, so phase two of this mount is complete. These two side gussets. So now I need to remake another one of these long bars and put it right across here and drill that same hole through it. So I mean this thing cannot this physically won't flex like there's like half an inch thick of like pure weld and steel. So, who knows. All right, so what we did here is we welded this piece on, and we kind of made a slidable mount, so we can just be able to slide it in. I mean, that's probably the only way it's gonna fit, so. I mean, I'll probably clean, I'll probably angle these edges a little bit too, just because they're really tight fit on this back piece. All right, guys, so here's the finished product. I literally filled this side with weld. Like, this is an inch thick, and like everything inside the square is pure metal. So, I, 
I mean, I also have this other side to hold it here to keep it from bending this way. We have this vertical mount to keep it from bending this way. I mean, if this thing doesn't work, I, I have no idea what we're gonna do. So, I don't know if you can see it bolted in here, but there she is. So now all I have to do is mount the master cylinder, those two things, and then it'll hook up to the clutch fork. So you can see I got the one mount there and then the one mount up there, and then the super reinforcement stuff. And that other mount over here, so we have two areas of support. Okay, so as you can see, it's holding up really well with not that much flex. So now we're gonna take it off road. Alright guys, this is just going to be a little, I'll probably put this in the CJ video, but I mean, there you saw a couple clips of CJ off-road and driving around and stuff and it's doing good. I mean, it made the like two hour drive here. Yeah, but it made the drive here, so that's really cool and a testament to how it's doing. Um, it rubs a little bit on the fenders, and that's okay, but that'll be have to that'll have to be changed. I'll probably do that after I get my uh, my front 410 diff in, and that's why I didn't put it in the four wheel drive. So enjoy these next couple of off road shots. Yeah, you're good. You got like a foot. Oh. You're looking good.
Okay. <laughs> Look at that right at the edge. Oh, the flex. A little bit. Some three wheeling. Jay, it's the X-Jay's turn! Yes, sir! 